I think you'd have to really select your market uh, and, and especially at the start and, and try not to spend too much money on the uh, on the IP side of things because uh, until your idea actually starts running and making money, you, you're gonna you're probably gonna waste a lot of money on that. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you, Nick, just from my experience and from an inventor's perspective. I obviously do whatever I can to get intellectual property before I send it overseas uh, and and work on my prototypes and work on, on my manufacturing. But at the same time, I'm also involved with, um, you know, selling some of my products. And I have people, reps from other countries, calling me up and or emailing and ordering my product. And I ship it to them. And it's really... How many different places can I go out and protect, and how many things can I really do? You know, from an inventor, uh, an inventor that might be limited on cash, and you know, you have all these other ideas that you want to be working on. Instead of spending all your money on international patents, focus on the United States and continue to build up a pipeline of of products, and uh, just know that somebody else, yes, can go ahead and make it outside of the country, but they're not going to they're not going to be able to ship it back in into the United States. So, I mean, uh, I think the United States has a good opportunity and a good market to, uh, to be able to present, uh, you know, to make a living over here with your product. Yeah, it was the number one market in the world. Um, I, there's no question about it. And uh, if you were to concentrate on the United States with your, with your IP, that's not a bad, not a bad start. Uh, and really, I would highly recommend. And I think probably all the all the patent lawyers that check tune into your show are probably going to shoot me for this. But I would say I would leave the the rest, <laughs> the rest, and certainly until the point that you make a success of it in in the U.S. before you start spending money on in every country you can think of. Yep. Um, I would the, the, the money would be far better spent developing the product and and getting a, getting a production run than it would be on uh, IP. Okay. Uh, Nick, I'm starting to get emails. Brian at gotinvention.com. I have emails coming in with questions. I also have a live chat feature now while you're listening to the show that you can ask questions. And I see there's already one question that came in. And we have, we have a couple of those questions, uh, Willie, that uh, Willie's asking, where can I get info on shipping laws and regulations? Like what's involved with getting special, uh, specialized uh, product made overseas and shipped here in the United States? So why don't we why don't we just hit that one? <clears throat> sure. What, um, can you repeat the question? Sure. Now? He's basically asking where to get shipping laws, and then he wants to understand how to import products uh, into the U.S. once they're made overseas. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, the physical process in terms of um, getting getting your container from or your container of goods from China to the U.S. is you obviously need a freight forwarder. I always recommend if you're not using a company like ours who, who do all that for you, if you're going to do it yourself, then your best bet would be to check out the yellow pages. I think it's similar uh, or, or Google search in your local area to find a, a local freight forwarder. Um, now, what happens is that freight forwarder will have links uh, all around the world, and, and of course they'll have links to China. Uh, and so, in the end, all you'll be dealing with, and this is exactly what you want uh, as uh, as an individual, is just to be dealing with some guy in your local town or nearby local town, speaking your language and your time zone, and, and he's dealing with everything. So, uh, and of course, his office will then be dealing with all the paperwork, dealing with all the hassle of talking to China, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's the way to do it. Um, am I answering the question there? Yeah, you are. You know, let's let's go through the process. I think to start, and I know that inventors, because I'm getting emails directly to Brian at GotInvention.com, and then there's some uh, questions that are coming in over the chat. So Nick, here, I have a product, and I'm going to my inventors groups. I'm listening to Got Invention Radio. I know a friend of a friend who manufactured a product, and they said that this man, this factory in in China or India or Pakistan, wherever, is the place to go. Mexico is the place to go to get my product done. So, what you're you're saying the first thing to do is obviously do your research, get references. Then you want to send them either a chicken scratch drawing, uh, a prototype that you might have made, 
uh, have some kind of communication with them and explain to them what they're looking for, modify a product that they're that they have uh, that they're involved with that already exists just to modify it to your um, specifications, right? So you take your product, you send it to a factory. Now, how do you find a factory? Well, one one that website that we always hear about, Nick, is uh, Alibaba, right? Or China.com. Sure. So what's your take on those type of websites? Is that a good place for inventors to start? Well, it's an interesting one. Alibaba is a bit of a double-edged sword, really. Um, it is very useful to find factories. Um, there's no question about that. I mean, we're, we're on Alibaba, so... Um, uh, it is it is a very useful tool, and actually the process I know this because we've been through it. The process is quite stringent in terms of Alibaba. Do send people to check you out. They do have a you, they do have to uh, a lot of paperwork you have to do, and uh, and they do check it. So you know everybody that you'll find on Alibaba now it didn't used to be the case. Absolutely not, and I'd say that a few years ago it didn't used to be the case, but now everybody on Alibaba. Is a legitimate uh, company. So um, what is what is Alibaba? They, uh, and what and the, the profile you'll get will be pretty accurate as well. When you go on anybody, you can click on the company profile. Mm -hmm. That will also have been checked out by one of the Alibaba staff. So um, the days of you know uh, uh, dodgy company profiles and, and dodgy companies full stop is is now over. What what you what it doesn't do, of course, is tell you how good the factory is. Um, what their experience is, how how uh, how much integrity the boss has got, uh, and how easy they're going to be to work with, and how how much time it'll take your waste effectively um, working with that particular factory. So of course a huge amount of unknowns. But if you do your research with it, then it is a very very useful tool. So what is Alibaba? So I heard you say, and and I I've experienced it, but there's inventors that never heard of it before. What actually is it? It's one of several, and it's probably the most famous, um, sourcing B2B websites um, uh, that there is, and there's others, uh, like EC21, uh, Global Sources, MadeInChina.com. These are all, um, these are all sort of factory sourcing uh, websites. Uh, you type in a product that you're looking for a category, and it will come up with, depending on you know maybe a hundred thousand different options or factory suppliers of that particular product. And then you want to narrow it down to the type of product that you need, uh, and then there could be manufacturers, and there's also distributors, right, Nick? Uh, well, there's trading companies. I think that's what you mean. Yeah. So what does that mean? Well, what a trading company does is they will take, a, well, let's, let's assume it's a good trading company. <laughs> uh, a, a good trading company will have a partnership, uh, a partnership deal with several different manufacturers. Now, let's say that trading company is specializing in hair dryers. Um, they, they will have maybe five, maybe ten different hair dryer manufacturers in China, good ones you would hope that they work with. And they would then, and they take all of the different SKUs that the, the, the factories make, and they put them into their own catalog and, and call it their own, effectively. Now, of course, what they're doing is they're basically buying and selling. So they they'll buy that hair dryer for ten dollars, and they'll sell it to you for twelve dollars. But um, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and in some cases, they are okay to work with. Um, and in other cases, they're superfluous, and you don't need to work with them. Well, that's really and and those type of companies, the 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 trading brokers, I guess you could call them, they're working on products that they're already involved with. But what about an invention that needs to be developed and manufactured? Yes, um, it is very much a piece of string. Uh, it's a very hard one to answer because, of course, well, I would say ninety nine percent of them are not going to be very useful because typically what they are is a sales team. They don't have any R&D capability, uh, and what you'll end up doing is, and of course they'll say yes to everything. So can you help me develop uh, this new fantastic hairdryer? Yes, we can. But actually all they're doing is they're kind of a blockage really in between, uh, they'll have no engineering capability, and I'd say 99% of them. 
uh, and they won't be actually being of any use in between communicating with the factory except a conduit. Uh, and, and then and then they probably cause delays because they're just in the way. Okay, so the but what you need to yep. find is if you are going to we're talking about the uh, head, <laughs> head, the new hairdryer. What you need to find with your Alibaba research is a, is a factory with strong R and D capability. Okay, really, uh, and you it can sounds... do, and you will do that by checking the company profile and by researching and asking the right questions. Uh, and and that's what you would want to to do your development work if you're going to go down that route rather than use a company like us. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, it sounds to me, Nick, that, and the lesson for, for that, what you just said, was do you need something that already exists or do you want to go directly to the factory? So while you're searching through Alibaba, let's say, you want to be able to identify if the uh, listing is for a manufacturer or a trading agent, Right. Right, and you can do that on Alibaba. It does actually. It, it tells you what what the, what you can't do <clears throat> without a bit further research. Is that um, many manufacturers also act as trading companies, so uh, they may well have a line of hair dryers, but they also happen to trade in calculators. Okay. Um, and, uh, and and I just need research to work that out. <laughs> okay. Well, the, it's okay. So we have. We found a factory. We did our research. We found a factory. We send over our drawings. Now, there's 2D drawings, there's 3D drawings, and then there's a drawing on, on a napkin or something that you're describing to them. So I, there's a lot of questions coming in, Nick. So let's try to go through as many of these as we can. So what, sure. what do you, how do you take in a file to be able to make a prototype? Type of yeah, I mean, what do you need? If I have a product and I want to develop it, most likely you're going to say, well, it probably makes sense for you to have a prototype first before you start going into tooling, and we'll talk about that in a second. So is that what you typically suggest to an inventor to do once they have uh, um, an idea? And how, do you, how would you like the idea to be presented to you? Right. Um I mean, typically, you want to go to a when you, once it gets to going to the factory point. That's assuming now that you've used a product development company um, to get you to a certain level, and the certain level I'm talking about would be 3D drawings. And typically in China, they now use SolidWorks. Um, so SolidWorks drawings is what you want, um, and so you want SolidWorks drawings and and, and and hopefully a prototype. So that's already been done, and. <clears throat> you call the tech, the tech pack. So the tech pack would include the drawings, would include the specifications. If it's an, if it's an electronic product, would include Gerber files, uh, would include the circuit diagrams and manufacturing instructions. So once you have that tech pack and the prototype, that is ideally what you would go to the factory with. So you'd say, here's the prototype. And you would also have a, you know, the prototype is usually not 100% perfect. You would have a report and say, what? wrong about the prototype, what's right and what's wrong. Now here's the tech pack of what we actually want. And that is ideally what you want to be going to a Chinese factory with. Okay. I got a, a lightning speed question that came in. How do you make a CAD drawing or 3D drawing? Where do you go to to make that? Uh, well, you go to uh, any, if you do a Google search for industrial design, um, then you can you, you can go to any company that does basically industrial design, and there, and there are many of them, okay. and there would be some in your local area. Now, obviously, they're going to be um, more expensive than than we are, so we, we can also use that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, do companies are companies okay with uh, a chicken scratch drawing, or do they? I mean, they're really working with machines and they want to keep the flow going they, it sounds to me like and and from my experience also they want to just be able to take the file put it into the machine and get rolling right <clears throat> yeah typically so typically a factory you know and again not a, uh, we're talking generally here because some factories do have a very strong r d department and you can go directly to them with your chicken scratch drawing but that's untypical um, more, you would need to get all that work done beforehand by uh, an industrial design or product development company, 
uh, and they'll do everything for you in that case. Get